Oh, oh, um, oh. We all know about these catchment conditions and, and the water streams. Roger is a real high power man on this job, but we just uh, went up in our own community and he left Palms North one afternoon at 3 o'clock, right my place at 10 to 6. Went for a tour around my farm. Um, went to the meeting, we had 42 people at our meeting, in that community. Uh, got home about 11 o'clock, had a couple of gyms. Roger gets up at 6 o'clock in the morning to come back to Palms North. He did this all of his own expense. So he's a real dedicated man on this job. I don't think we know how lucky we are to have So talent is what we've got right here. And um, he's on the farm of council with us for the rest of the night, which is pretty fun to have. Um, third generation farmer, large family owned home down at Rangatiki, former regional supreme winner of the Ballots Farm Environmental Awards, which we've got one as well. Um, extremely passionate about farming and rural communities and believes there is a huge opportunity ahead for sheep and beef farmers in New Zealand. Roger is the current chairperson of the Rangitiki Rivers Catchment Collective and was instrumental in helping establish the collective of the closest to conferences, an area of 700,000 hectares. Um, he's going to show you how to make positive changes in the scale of the catchment community. <coughs> Welcome to the floor. The floor is yours, Roger. Right, no thanks everyone, we'll rip into it. And when Jason asked me about to do this, I thought, shit, no one's gonna to wanna to listen to me um, because everyone in the Rangitiki's heard me and a few people in the Manawa too have heard me. So I thought, oh, I hope there's someone out of, out of town that wants to hear me. Um, so we'll fly through it. Uh, introduction, right, Brian's done a bit of a quick spiel. Um, I've done a bit of this speaking around the country and I, and I used to do very little brief introduction. Then I got told off by people and they said, Roger, you've got to introduce yourself properly. So then I went overboard and I got told you're saying far too much. So now I just do a very brief one, farming. I'm a farmer on the coast. Uh, I've got three daughters married with a wife, relatively large farm, irrigation, lamb finishing, forestry, all sorts of things we do. So that's enough about that. Beef and lamb, heavily involved in beef and lamb, okay? Rather than sit back and uh, criticise everything that everyone else is doing, um, I thought, right, we pay a levy, so I'll get stuck in. Um, I'm on the Farmer Council with Brian, and I'm also on the Environmental Reference Group, which meets in Wellington every, oh, about three times a year, and we get heavily involved in greenhouse gases and all the national freshwater policy stuff that which the government went through. Uh, this one here's the little baby that I'm going to talk about today, Rangatui Rivers Catchment Collective. I got this thing started four years ago. Um, and uh, it's really underway, going well. So we'll, we'll rip into it. Where are we today? Right. First thing is, social pressure is demanding change. And I think we all know this. You know, you go back 20 years ago, 15 years ago, we didn't have these things. We probably did, but they were in a bag. And those that can remember used to flick the aerial up, and I've still got mine. It's great. It's going to be worth a bit in a few years. Um, but we used to write letters to the editor. And you know, you wrote a thousand and one got printed. Now everyone takes a photo and every single one gets printed. All right, so, um, you know, times are changing. They have changed significantly. It's not going to go away. And the government likes being re elected, so they listen to all of this, all the social media. Okay, they want to get voted back in. And I put up on there, I hope I pushed the right thing. Yep, 4.9 million versus 100,000, and someone said to me, Roger, you're miles out there, there's a lot more of us than that. And I said, all right, let's go to a million, and we'll go to four million. Who wins? Not us, okay? So there's four to one votes against us as a rural industry, all right? And I'm not saying they're against us, I'm just saying that they're not on board with us as far as everything else is concerned, environment, social, um, environment, water, everything else. Okay, so we're never going to say that New Zealand um, is, 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 sees us as the backbone of the country. Those days are gone, okay? And we need to take note of it. We need to firstly catch up, and catch up is, is, is important. For, for a while, farmers have been saying, no, no, we're doing a great job. We're not. That's why society has is, is whacked us with this national freshwater policy, all right? It's only because of that is because we're behind the game we're polluting our waters and we're still losing some of our soils and we don't have enough biodiversity. We're still killing things. Um, uh, in our, in, you know, it was only 30 years ago we were being paid to chop trees down, a clear bush. So times have changed quickly. So society doesn't like that, so we've got to catch up 
and get ahead of the environmental expectations of society. What they demand. So it's what Auckland wants, what Wellington wants, and what Christchurch wants. It's not what we want. Farmers need to take responsibility for their own environment, providing evidence of stewardship and sustainability. Okay, we can't sit back and say no one told us to do it. Those days are over. Okay, we need to really recognise what is wanted and we need to take be responsible for it. We can't say, oh, it was their fault, it was their fault, or they guided us wrong. We as, as individuals on our farms need to take our resp be responsible for our own stewardship and ownership um, of our land and make sure it's sustainable for what is wanted going forward for many generations. What is our current model? It's driven from the top down. Now, this is 100 years old, probably 1,000 years old. All right, so we've got the government, and I've just explained that. They listen to society. They want to be elected back in. So they're not going to do something that society doesn't like because they know they'll get the boot. And they're only there for three years, so they try and do the best thing they can to stay in power. They set all the rules and policy. They tell them the regional council. And then the regional council has to decipher it, which is exactly what's happening at the moment with the national freshwater policy. They're trying to understand it and implement it into our, into our various regions. They tell us, as farmers and landowners, and then we've got these guys, okay, that are there with the big stick. Okay, that's how it works. It's been like it, and we're still in that model. And that model's going to hang around for a while yet, but we've got to do something about it. <coughs> right, like the background drop, that's quite cool, isn't it? I love my doing my PowerPoints, it's great fun. Um, that's all about community catchments, what's the aim? So there's a community. What's the aim of a community catchment? Right, I've already said some of this. You're going to say here some of these things two or three times today. It's first to catch up and then to lead setting environmental standards that protect our waterways, protect our soils, and enhance our biodiversity that we can all be proud of firstly as farmers and secondly New Zealanders. Right? As far as I can stuff the rest, I want to be really proud of my farm, knowing that what I'm doing on my farm is really looking after what we have. Okay, and can advertise and promote it. Sure thing, it'd be great for, the, great, great for the New Zealanders to be proud of it as well. I think we've got a challenge there. Uh, even though Beef and Lamb does surveys and they tell us that 95% will, 95 of people support us as farmers, which is probably reality, um, we still need to get them doing it in social media, and that is not happening. Um, secondly, we need to help make our rural communities vibrant and economically sustainable. Now, I think we're a fifth generation farm, and there's probably, I was talking to the Morrisons, they're seventh generation farm, okay? We all want our farms to carry on. We all want to move to the next generation. We don't want all of our kids dis disappearing to Auckland and Wellington and London, wherever they go, Paris. So we need to have vibrant rural communities, really important, okay? So we need to have employment in our communities um, that will keep people there. They've got to need to, they need to be economically sustainable. At the moment, if you don't dag sheep or you can't work a dog, you're probably challenged to what you're going to do in the hill country. All right? And we need to start thinking outside the square, and there's a whole lot of other people who have been talking, what can we do in our communities that will make them vibrant and economically sustainable? be able to employ our future generations, okay? And I'm not just talking about the boys, I'm talking about the girls, I'm talking about the wives, I'm talking about the partners, I'm talking about the kids, okay? We want to keep our communities strong. We want to keep them, you know, they've been pulled apart. Fast roads, fast cars, schools have been closed down. Little community schools have been closed down. Everyone goes off to that school or this school. Blows our communities apart. So we need to really think um, of how to look after our community. They bring communities together, okay, and you can see the list of people. Everyone wants the same thing, okay? We all want the same thing. The iwi want the same thing. The government wants the same thing. Everyone in Auckland Wellington wants the same thing. Non-government organisations, they all want it, okay? So it brings it all together. It's not, we're, not, we're not unique as farmers. Everyone else wants exactly what we want. This is really key. They provide a willing forum to educate and influence positive outcomes for our environment. Now the key words here are it's willing. So a community catchment, there's willing people there. You're not at school because you have to be. You're going along because you want to be there. It provides an educate. 
If you're wanting to learn something, it's easy to educate and easy to influence. Okay? If you've been told you've got to go and learn something, you sort of go along a bit like this. The arms are folded. And you think, oh, yep, I'm here doing my job. But if you're actually there wanting to learn, all of this stuff here becomes easy and it's very easy to change for positive outcome for our environment. We need to lead rather than being led. This is a biggie. Okay? We are too apathetic as farmers, sitting back and saying, she'll be right. We actually need to get out and we need to lead our communities, lead, lead where we're going, where we want to be socially, economically, environmentally, the whole lot. Because if we don't, those four million other people are going to tell us what we have to do. All right? It's really simple. If we don't lead where society wants us to be, lead our communities where society wants us to be or expects us to be, I'm not talking about two years, I'm talking about 10, 20, 30, 50 years. Okay? So we need to lead rather than being led. At the moment, we have still got that being led model. All right? We've relied on our federated farmers and our governments and everyone else and our regional councils saying what we have to do. We've got to change it unless we want to carry on doing what we're doing and get what we get being given. Allow others to tell our story. Can everyone see that? Shall I get out of the road? Shall I move over here? I might move over here. Is that better? Yeah, I can still read that. Is that better? Yeah. Um, allow others to tell our story. Now, this is a really important point. Who's a ram breeder in here? I've got to pick on someone. Right, Duncan, you're a ram breeder today. All right. Now, Dunk, he's a fantastic farmer over on State Highway 50, all right? And he's a really good ram breeder, so he tells us, all right? And he can tell us that till he's blue in the face and he can spend $10,000 a year on marketing. But none of you will listen to it, the same as you don't look, listen to any other advertisement. But if everyone else in this room is buying Duncan's rams and you tell each other, then you will listen. All right, so we can't tell our own story as farmers about the environment. Really important thing to know. Beef and lamb are telling us we have to tell our own story all the time. We can't. It does not work. Ravens Down can stand up and blue in the face and tell you they're the best fertiliser company in the country. But until other farmers tell you they're the best fertiliser company, no one will listen to Ravens Down, but they will listen to the other farmers. It's exactly the same. So that's something is really important message. We have to allow others to tell our story. Right, video. Here we go. Our initial movement started about three to four years ago when there were concerns about feedlotting along the Rangitiki River, which started to get the community together. As a result of that, we started realising that if we were going to do something about this, we needed to work together. And it's just recently in the last year that we have actually formed the Rangitiki Rivers Catchment Collective. A community collective, what that does is it brings farmers together and it allows us to educate and support people. And it's far easier to do it as a group than it is as an individual. The first meeting we had was 60 attended. The next one we had 50 attended. And all of a sudden the word just started spreading. And we ended up having four meetings and uh, we got 100% buy-in. Everyone could see what we were trying to achieve and everyone agreed that we as a community uh, needed to get behind this thing and make a difference. We've decided to take a challenge on of doing the whole of the Rangitiki and the fungi who want to join us. So there'll be a whole lot of little sub-catchments underneath it. People hear our story, they hear what we're doing and they say, how can we be involved? But it is challenging because farmers are busy and there's got to be someone with a bit of oomph who's going to push each sub-catchment. And we've got uh, Mark uh, Crystal and Ruth Rainey here who have been dynamic in getting their areas going and we've got other groups that are setting up as well. So we have set up uh, the Upper uh, Mofonga River Catchment Group we're calling it. We had a first meeting to engage farmer support and, and had 100% and then we went on from there to engaging all users of the Mofonga River. Uh, which includes the Defence Force um, and includes Genesis who take a lot of water for hydroelectric power, Iwi, District Council, uh, Fish and Game, Dock, basically all users of the river system. Just in our local catchment we have a lot of young uh, couples coming back in, uh, the next generation's coming back into farm and, and they have their own brands set up and so you know they can dovetail into that and, and, and use what we're doing with the catchment to support what they're doing. The benefits are not just in, from an environmental aspect, there's also a whole community aspect, whether it means coming in for a cup of tea, whether it means having a beer. 
It's around supporting uh, supporting each other and supporting farmers and, and farmers talking to farmers. Farmers learn from farmers. Well, we're really conscious about that and that's been uh, really critical in a lot of things that we do do. And there's always a different way of having different environmental outcomes. And so farmers are really learning from farmers and we feel that's really important. The Rangatiki has got an extremely diverse catchment and so that's what's so important about not having one rule that fits all because we've all got different soils, we've all got different ideas and different strategies. By forming a community catchment it allows us to actually work together and get ahead of where society wants us. It's going to take a little while for all these things to happen but the movement and the people that are involved in them are passionate about it, they understand it and I believe there's no way it's going to fall over and drop off. Joining a catchment group and thinking and thinking about actually planning ahead, I just might fence that this year or I might change how I strip graze this year. We'll do small bites but we'll eventually get to a, a big a big achievement. So what do we form? We formed the RRCC, Rangatiki Rivers Catchment Collective. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll get into it because we know what to we'll fly through the presentation. Hope to give you time, a bit of time for um, questions. Um, Incorporated Society, what does it do? So we've got an Incorporated Society over the top. Um, it, uh, what's its job? Um, first thing is it provides a formal recognised structure. Okay, no one's going to give you any money um, to do anything environmental unless you have a formal structure. So you need some organisation to manage your money. All right, it's really simple. Um, and that's MPI, uh, Ravens Down, Balance, Meat Companies, whoever it is, regional councils, whoever want to give you some money to support what you're doing in the environment, you've got to have a formal structure because no one will just give it to you in the bank in your in your back pocket. Uh, manages the money, yep. <clears throat> Records the footprint. Now, this is really important. There's lots of people ripping into doing um, community uh, sub catchments and doing all this great stuff, but you've got to remember why we're doing this. Okay, we've got to put tools in the toolbox and those, we've got to be able to allow others to tell our story going forward because in, in 10 years time the Greens are going to get in and they're going to bring, down, bring around another national freshwater policy which is going to say you guys have got to, you're still polluting, this, polluting the waterways and you're still doing this, doing this with the soil. So we need to really understand what we've got now, e.g. 2021 and what we've got in 2031 and be able to tell the story from what we're doing in 2031 back to what we're doing in 2021. So we've still got the same number of sheep, we're still putting on the same number of fertiliser, but our waterways have improved, we have less slipping going on, we've increased our biodiversity. So unless we record what we've got now in our, on our farms and in our subcatchments, how can we tell a story going forward? Okay, so there's lots of people going out doing fencing, riparian planting and everything else, but they're not writing down what they've actually got, so they're allowing others to tell their story in the future. Really important point, record the footprint. Stores the data, put tools in the toolbox. Okay, we're all busy as farmers. We're not going to remember what we did in the last 10 years. So as a community catchment, you've got to record that stuff, and that's the, um, that's the, organ the, the formal structure over top. They restore all that data for us, okay, and bring it out when it's needed. Okay, they're not going to talk about us as individual farms. It's confidential how many sheep I've got and how much fertiliser I put on and how many kilometres of fencing. But they're going to store it in a database that allows us to capture that in the Rangatiki in 2021, there was 300 kilometres of, of waterways fenced. In 2031, there's 3,000 kilometres of, of waterways fenced. What a brilliant story. Tell the Greens where to go. Okay, that sort of stuff. Um, Employees catchment coordinator, really important because you've got to have people. We've got two and a half now in the Rangatiki, two and a half people full time working for us, and they're working for us as farmers. Okay? Every sub catchment can't manage that. So that person is employed by the RRCC. Sub catchments, what do they do? They develop a vision for the community. Okay? It's your community. It's not about beef and lamb coming in and telling you what you want, or it's not about Auckland telling you what you want, or anyone else telling you what you want. It's you as a, as a group of farmers or a, or a community saying, what do we want? Mahia Peninsula is going predator free. Okay? They're, going, they're going to have Kiwis over the whole of their, um, over Mahia one day. They're going predator free. Okay? You guys all might decide you want bellbirds. 
all right? You might decide you want X, Y, and Z, but it's your community, you decide, and it's got to come from the bottoms up. It can't be you to being told that you're going to do this. It's got to come from the community. It's your vision, and you create it. You capture your current footprint. I've already said that. Very important. Decide how often you want to meet. Okay, Mark, you heard him talking, passionate farmer. Mark um, Crystal, uh, they started in Aurora, Hiss and Aurora, and they had four meetings. Okay, they've cut back on that now. They're down to about two a year. But two's heaps. Okay, you get someone to, um, to learn and, and you get together as a community. Education brings experts in to help. Okay, so you might, you, you, you'll have an evening, you'll have a barbecue, have a few beers, you'll get someone in to help you talk about how you're going to put twos throughout the community. How, what, what trees you're going to bring in, how to do, how to do fencing, riparian fencing. So you bring an expert in to talk about good management practice, fence off critical source areas, all that sort of stuff. If every farmer in this country fenced off all of our critical source areas, everyone knows what I'm talking about? That's the bottom of a valley where the water flows through. If we all fenced those off before we um, graze them, we would remove, I think it's 80% of the nutrients out of the waterways in this country, okay? Clean up our waters overnight, if we could do it. Set minimum standards for what you want to do in your community. Water testing, you might do some water testing, okay? Now there's fifth, oh, I'll get onto it in a minute, no, I'll, I'll talk about it. You might do some water testing. You might do MCI, microinvertebrate index stream health. So it's no science involved in it, it's going there and seeing what creepy crawlies are in your streams, okay? Lifting up your rocks and seeing whether you've got good bugs or bad bugs. It's your community, you set the rules. Really important, don't let anyone tell you what to do. Because if anyone starts to tell you what you to do as a community, um, it'll fall apart. It's got to be community owned and community set. Right, community catchment corner, what do they do? Support the sub catchments, they're our lackeys. They're running around doing everything for us because we're busy, okay? Help capture the current footprint for each sub catchment group. Organise experts to help educate community members. It's all good stuff. Help develop farm environment, environmental plans. Help with greenhouse gases. Okay, we're all going to need help with that. I can tell you, I need lots of help with it. I've been to about four or five meetings. I still don't understand it all. Capture sub-catchment activity. E.g., go around and take photos of streams that are being fenced, critical source areas that have been fenced off, all to be able to store in that database so that we allow others to tell our story. Capture riparian planting, record good management practice, e.g. when critical source areas are fenced off. Help the community develop a vision and it'll continuously change. Okay, the vision at the moment for a community will completely be different to what it is in 10 years time. Connect our farmers, our communities and our storytellers. Right, we'll move on, another video. The information we're collecting, we've got a lot of data with subcatchments which are passionate about knowing how they're not or how they are polluting their sub-tributaries. What we have found is that with the data that we've been collecting on the various different tributaries and in, in, in the Mofonga stem, we've put all the data up on a, on a big screen and, and we had that real that buy-in from the farmers and the certain tribs looking at it saying, hmm, how do I get my, my trib to be like his trib? So that's, that's working really, really well. We're going to be collecting with photography, showing where riparian places have been planted, where streams have been planted, where natives have been planted. All that will be captured by the subcatchment, which will then will flow to the incorporated society and which will hold that data. So we've actually got some real information that can support what we're doing in the Rangitiki. I could tell everyone that I've got a farm environmental plan and I've got my waterway fenced off, but it really doesn't tell you a lot. But if I tell you that our subcatchment down here on the sand, we've all got 90% of our waterways fenced off. We're all doing riparian planting and the same in the Mofonga or the Kawatau or another part of the Rangitiki, it becomes a really strong, positive message. It's far stronger working as a group than it is as an individual farm with a farm plan. It's only recently that we decided we needed to make it into an incorporated society. It was very obvious as we got involved in this that there had to be some formal structure around it. 
what's going to happen as subcatchments form in the Rangitiki, the chairperson from that group will automatically come on to the Incorporated Society and has the voice to be able to bring information to the Incorporated Society, plus it allows information to be able to go back to all the subcatchments. Because we have an incorporated society, we're actually employing someone who is going to work on behalf of our group as farmers. That person's job is to help capture the data, help educate and help f formally capture everything that we're doing as a group and keep that momentum going. We as farmers and a group have decided we're going to put our hand in our pocket and we're charging every farmer 70 cents a hectare to a maximum of $1,000. And what that money does, it goes into the incorporated society and is used to help pay that facilitator. It's really important that that person is employed by us, so they work for us as a group, uh, and they're our motivator. The Incorporated Society has been, uh, been outstanding in supporting uh, the individual catchments, and then the individual catchments are collecting the data and feeding that back into the Incorporated Society as well. So it's a win-win scenario where we're, we're both trying to help each other out. I mean, in setting them up, there's been a whole heap of resources around uh, for us to use from New Zealand Linky Trust, from Horizons, from Beef and Lamb, um, and, and so we're very supportive of, uh, or very thankful for, for all that support we've been getting. Some farmers are feeling really pressurised about what's being discussed out there, the environmental constraints that could be possibly be coming in on farmers, and a large number of farmers are doing really good things now, but belonging to a subcatchment group that belongs to a bigger Rangitiki Rivers catchment collective validates some of the things they're doing and they start to feel better about themselves. Uh, so what have we achieved? Um, there's the Rangitiki, there's 700,000 hectares. Okay, the gentle Annie's up here somewhere. Um, there's the mountain, so it tells you the size. Um, we've achieved, we've got 15 subcatchment groups so far. Uh, we've got, yep, you can see the data. We're testing 56 water sites at the moment. Now, there's lots of controversy about test, uh, water testing, but boy, does it get farmers motivated. When they know what's happening in their waterway, it brings them in to bo on board, I can assure you. It's huge. Regional Council said you don't need to do all that, uh, but to get farms engaged and understand what's happening, you do need to do it. And you've got to do, do it for three years to get a true understanding. So we've got 56 tests going so far. Really, really valuable. We're testing for nitrates, phosphates, turbidity, and E. coli. And I was presenting at a group the other day, uh, not in the Rangitiki, but outside, who were trying to get a catchment group going. And it's done in a, in a traffic light system, red, um, yellow, blue, green. Green is really good, red is terrible. This particular area, they've been testing for a year, they're 100% red in nitrate, okay? So if they don't do something about it as a community and work out how they're gonna get around it, because it's a very high performing farming area, the government's going to tell them how to do it. So they've at least ahead of where the society is at the moment, but if one day the government's gonna say, you're not allowed that red. Valuable stuff. We've got more catchment groups being formed at the moment. We've got two and a half uh, community catchment people, coordinators helping us. We've been given 1.6 million by the government, okay? And I got into trouble because I was presenting down at Southland and I said that uh, MPI throws money around like lolly water. The only problem is that I didn't know was someone from MPI, someone very close to the top, was there in the audience. So that was quite funny. I can tell you I got a very quick reaction. Um, but they do throw, around, throw money around like lolly water but you've got to have your ducks lined up, okay? If you fit the criteria, they'll support you. The government has got a lot of money set aside to support us. So if you're organized as a community and you don't have to do it as a subcatchment group, as, a, as a, an incorporated society with a clear direction from your subcatchment groups, there is money to support you from MPI, all right? And MFE, all right? But you've got to be organized. You just can't say, oh, we're gonna form a group want some money. You've got to have a division, You've got to have a strategy. You've got to be working with your iwi, okay? You've got to be working with your regional council, all right? It's really important. MPI, we've just been given 30K from another consultation process, which is, which is for another application uh, from, from the government. Um, right, it's not, all, it's not just about the environment. Okay, so those, that's the community all working together in, a, in an arrow, with an arrow form. Okay, I, I found that on the internet. Social, right, so it's not just about the, the environment, it's bringing the communities back together. I spoke about schools being broken up. Okay, this is a great way. How many people don't know their neighbour? There's heaps. There's heaps. 
okay? We need to stop that. We need to bring it all back together. It's mental health. There's suicide happening in this country in the farming world on a, I don't know if it's daily, but it's probably weekly. Um, it's disgusting. It's disgraceful. You know, community catchments can help fix this sort of stuff, share problems. Let's share resources. Let's share labour, facilities, machinery. Let's share spoils. I'm really thinking out here when I'm talking like this. Okay, someone may have brilliant wintering soils in a community. And that community might say, shucks, we're going to winter this, these animals here. But you're going to do something for them. This is really pushing boundaries, guys. This is one I carry on about a lot. Okay, hill country farmers, they may have, they may be all sheep and beef. Okay, and they want to diversify how they're going to keep their, entertain their children, how they're going to keep their wives busy, how they're going to keep the children busy. So let's say you've all got two hectares of absolutely perfect soils for, we'll pick on oranges. You're never going to do it by yourself. But as a community, if there's 10 of you put, you put together your two hectares and all of a sudden you've got 20 hectares of oranges, you've got one cool store, one gang of labour, one manager, and all of a sudden you've diversified your community, you've provi provided some um, uh, diversification in your community so you're making it vibrant. Okay, you're taking it, spreading it out, uh, what you can do in your community. But it's got to be done as a group, and you'll never do it by yourself. Like part of our consultation, that 30K, one of our communities, they know they haven't got any good cell phone coverage and things. and things. So they're, one of the things they're doing as communities, they want to fix that. Okay, They're going to get together and they're going to get the towers and things in so that they fix their internet and they fix their cell phones. There's huge reasons to do it. Okay, the government's not going to do it for us. Beef and lamb's not going to do it. No one else is going to do it, so you've got to do it as a community. What's the future model? It's driven from the bottom up. Okay, We get ahead of what society wants. We tell the regional council and we tell everyone else. Um, and they will tell the government and society will leave us alone. It's as simple as that. Okay, We've got to get ahead of where we want. We've got to have a vision out, and it's not just a couple of years, it's 10, 20, 30, 50 years. Biodiversity, we need to be thinking what wood pigeons we want. We need to be thinking about what native blocks of trees we need to spread around at our farm so we can have a, a um, and improve our biodiversity, our bees, whatever. The one-offs, short term. Community catchment is great for supporting the national freshwater policy stuff, getting an understanding about that. Greenhouse gases. You know, we've just been hit with the first. We're going to be hit with the second one soon. Uh, and there's nothing better than talking about it in a group than trying to work it out yourself. Long term, we need to put tools in the, door to, in the toolbox, okay? We need to get information to be allow others to tell our story. So we need to gather our footprint and capture all that stuff. So we need tools in the toolbox for intergenerational um, succession planning for our farms to be able to hold, keep that, keep, have that information to be able to tell that story going forward. Who's in your team, okay? Do you have your storyteller? Okay, so it's not us. We're not the storytellers. It's everyone else in our community are our store storytellers, okay? They're going to tell someone else and they're going to tell someone else. The regional council is a great storyteller for the Rangitiki, I can tell you that. Landcare Trust was a great storyteller for the, uh, for the Rangitiki. There's lots of people telling stories about us, but it's not us doing it. The regional council is part of your team. Okay? The regional council should be at every single one of your meetings. Okay? Everyone thinks they're the enemy. They're not. Auckland, Wellington, Christchurch are your enemy, and the government's the one that sets the policy. They're your enemy. They've told the regional council what to do. The regional council is part of our community, and they're just implementing it. Okay? It's better to get them in the team with you and work with them than it is to keep them out there because they'll become a storyteller. Maintaining identity and key values. Our key value is bottoms up. Okay, we must maintain that. As soon as someone starts trying to tell your community what to do, tell them to off. Okay, because it's your community, you set the rules. As soon as you have someone else trying to tell you what to do, you'll have people that will go dagging sheep instead of coming along to a community event because they're being told they have to do this and they have to do that. It's far better if you have the buy-in your, yourselves. Who leads? The coordinator of the farmer. Okay, the coordinator is there to support you. The farmers must drive it. Okay, so just because you employ someone, you can't think, oh, tickety-boo, paying someone 
50k, 70k, whatever it is, they're going to tell us what to do and help us. Can't do that. They're just there to guide you. Footprint, really important, spoken about that. Take home message. It's all about community and collaboration. It's not about center, setting grandiose goals for everyone to aspire to. Okay, we've been polluted over uh, 100 years, 1,000 years, whatever it is. We're not going to fix it in 30 seconds. Um, it's about getting on the ladder and taking, taking the start. So it's all um, making a start. Uh, uh, it's not about setting grandiose goals. I need to just talk about it just a fraction. You can't go in as a community and say, right, we're going to do this, because you've got to remember everyone's financial restraints. So you've got to go to sp at a pace that everyone could afford, all right? Or else you chase people away. There'll be people with debt up to here, and they can't go at the speed with someone who's got no debt, all right? So you need to think about that as a community. Does not have to cost a lot. It all starts with good management practice. I spoke about if we all fenced off our critical source areas. Really simple. Everyone can run out of poly wire and put stakes in the ground. That might be the first thing a community does. Says, right, from this year on, no one will let a cattle beast go in the water and we will fence off all of our critical source areas. It costs nothing. It costs a little bit. But it doesn't mean you have to plant an eight wire post to bat a fence. Everyone has different financial commitments. I've spoken about that. We can either sit back, do nothing, accepting the top-down regulation, or we can take control of our industry and aim for the bottom-up model. We need this across the country, and it is happening. I've spoken in Gisborne, Southland, Fairley, um, where else? Uh, Rotorua, also all over the place. Taranaki. Taranaki. Um, and there's a huge interest, okay? So don't be the last ones off the rank. Put your hand up and say, who do we have to get going to get a community catchment going? I think that's me, that's me. thanks guys. Um, and that's just the, the summary of what I've just said. Thank you Roger. How many people have heard this story or know anything about this before today? Me? Most of you. Talk to the converter. Talk to the converter. <laughs> well, when Roger came to our hall, we had 42 people come to it. Roger couldn't believe it. We had a meeting about three weeks ago again. And we had 30 come. And we had two girls from the Marae. A bit of local Mariah just in the road. And these two little marriages believe we should fish every stream on our farm. Now, I sat down with them and said, girls, this cannot happen. We've got this little stream from a little bit of water. This is not practical. And so we had to talk these girls around, and they walked away all happy ass. And says, Roger said, we've got to have everybody on board. You cannot do it on your own. You've got the whole lot to be part of leaders. Um, and it is a community thing, and it's been a great community for us for people from all different walks of life in our community um, get involved with this. And so we've got a Waitara River, a Waitara River. We've got six different places where the water comes into our community. Um, and so this coming in July, we're getting all six. So they come into the river, all tested for water. So we've done every three months, correct? We do it every month. We do it every month. And so after 12 months or two years or three years, like what you say, we can then go back to whoever and say, right, this is what it was done like. This is what we've got. So uh, I think it's a great idea. Well done, Roger, for your patience. Uh, and I need to show everyone we appreciate it. Are there any questions first? We've probably got a couple of minutes. Are there any questions? Or does everyone go for it? When you talk about the footprint, what are you reporting? Really good question. Well, we've, we've researched that really well. So we're recording what you're grazing. And effective farm area, forget it. People forget effective farm area is your whole farm, OK? So we're recording what's on your farm because Auckland, Wellington, Christchurch actually think the bit that you're not farming is more valuable than the bit you are. So the effective farm area is your whole farm. All right? You need to get that out. Don't say, oh, I don't use that bit. That's got the gorse. That's gorse is valuable shit. Okay? So we're recording that. We're recording how many kilometres of waterways we have on our farm, how many are fenced, how many are not, how many pine trees we have, how many indigenous species we have, how many sheep we have, how many hoggets we have, how many cattle we have, how much nitrogen's going on, how much fertiliser's going on. We're recording as much as we can. And we have had a lot of trouble getting farmers to fill those in. We're up to 50 in the Rangatiki. And that's one thing our coordinators are doing. They're going around and helping those farmers get that information. Okay? It's really important to get it. And you, we just can't drift on without getting that information. How do you deal with the little blocks in the town, in the town is it? We charge them as well. They're welcome to come along, Greg. They come on. We charge our community. Uh, yes, they are. Yep. Oh, yeah, you get some passionate people. Pahongana Valley, uh, it's not in the Rangatiki, 
but that there has got more people from Massey, le more lecturers from Massey than anywhere in the country. So you can imagine the fun they have at their community meeting. They're all experts, okay? <laughs> um, just over the hill from us, you know, there's a lot of pine trees yep. that have taken over communities, etc., etc. They're in your community. And the, yeah, they're just over the fence from us now and possibly going to grow again. You know, they're ruining our fresh water, our creeks, you know, the, the, the weight of tree on the side of the hill. Yep. Um, it's, it's, it's a recipe for disaster. Yep. Can everyone hear that? I had exactly the same question in Gisborne. Okay, exactly the same. You need to bring those people in to your meetings so they understand how the rest of the community feels about their farming practice, because it is farming, on your boundaries. Okay, and what they're doing to their waterways, they've got to be part of it, so they have to help understand what the solutions. They've got to start thinking, oh shit, we can't do that. Um, I think in this scenario, the horse is possibly bolted. Well, it has if we think, we think, it's bolted if we're thinking short term, but we've got to think 20, 30 years, okay? And until they start getting the message that actually it's unacceptable to do what they're doing on the boundary, which it gradually is filtering through, um, they will start changing their practice. And you can't expect them to change it overnight because they've got businesses, but we need to, it's, you know, it's got to be a long-term thing. Yeah, these are corporate, corporate Yeah. I know, because that's in Gisborne. There's plenty in Gisborne with corporates, big farms, but there's people coming along. Well, I'd like to pick this bit all over. Everybody show their appreciation.